I, everything I try over and over and over again. All it's, I show, all I show are my wrinkles. Well, soon you look lovely, and you're you're born. We're really just gonna have to get her a light ring. Is that what I need? I have my hot light, but that's not, not enough. It, it gives you partial light, but you, you are to... live on Facebook. Excellent. Oh, it goes up here in the corner. Meeting is now streaming. Excellent. All right, good. So yeah, we will introduce you to the joys of the light ring tune. It's very helpful. Yes, maybe you should. Um, it's what I oh use. goodness, yes, it is live. <laughs> Excellent. Woohoo, thank you. So yeah, the new thing we have to help out with <laughs> during book club especially is to help me know things are live because we missed the first 15 minutes of book club uh, this time. But yes, next month's book is This Beauty, An Ideal Vessel Ooh. by Sarah Hans. And I will get that up as a event page with all the links what's the and name it, what's the author's name again i can't read it sarah hans h-a-n-s okay thank you you are so welcome let me get marlena in here who has much good news going in her life right now all right Kate, i hear you i only gave him three treats so you know a very mean mummy <laughs> he must have more, which is why he's been helping with the setup. All right, Kate. Yes, you poor thing. It's been horrible. So, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience as we are trying this very new setup. Um, for those of you who came in just a few, not really even late, but just a few minutes after I explained, Phil the cheeky camera is on his last legs. And uh, he will still do a nice close up so we can see the hand sewing, um, which is very important for this portion of the, the sew along. But he will no longer look at anything like a face. He just sort of flops. And so it's a, it's a lot of cleavage and not much face. Um, so <laughs> not exactly what I'm looking for. Right, hello Marlena, I'm so glad you could join us. Hello. Hello, hello. So, um, we are going to be looking at hand stitching, how we might hand finish the bias binding of the lovely kaftan. So you can see I have pressed it and pinned it in place. And when I pressed this this time, I folded under the raw edge, just about three eighths of an inch, um, just enough. I will be honest, I do it by feel at this point. I eyeball it. But if you want to be really accurate, you'll want one of these, a very handy dandy seam gauge. If you don't have one in your sewing kit, I highly recommend it. They are such a useful tool. Now, this is a vintage one. So I'm going to bring that. Actually, I'm going to put it here under fill. And so you can see it has a nice little metal toggle. And that makes it actually last a bit longer. The metal bit is more snug. It doesn't wear out as fast. So I do actually recommend looking for vintage uh, vintage versions of these, as the more modern versions, um, tend to wear out very quickly, and then the toggle doesn't stay where you place it, which that loses a bit of the utility. So um, we're going to have one of those. Um, for tonight's kit, you may want a needle threader, as we're going to be doing some hand stitching. You will want, of course, some thread. I like Gutemann, um, just a personal preference. I have to use it for my Janome. The Janome doesn't like thread on the um, other spool styles. It tends to jam with them. There's something about the way Gutemann puts the thread on the spindle that just works better for my Janome. 
I also really love the Thread Heaven. Thread magic works. Thread Heaven is no longer made, but you can still find some. And it's really magical, truly. It's thread uh, lubricants, essentially. It's a little bit of silicone in a box and you run your thread through that and it helps prevent tangles. This is sort of fun. I can do a little Vanna White under here. Um, <clears throat> I really like to have a thimble for the hand stitching. If you don't do this sort of hand stitching with a thimble, it's all right. You're not going to wreck your fingers. But I actually find it a good opportunity to practice with a thimble. When we get to working on hat making, you will want to use a thimble. That is, it's really not a good life choice to go without the thimble at that point, you will wreck your hands if you do. So I like these sorts of projects to help me practice um, using a thimble. As I, when I was growing up, learning to sew from my grandmama, just doing buttons and embroidery and very um, simple hand stitching, and lots of samplers, I never used a thimble and I had to learn later on. Um, so yeah, I like a nice, very sharp little needle. It, you know, it's not very, it's actually not very long this needle um, because we're not doing a type of hand stitching that's going to require a lot of leverage. But it's very sharp. It's perfect for this sort of stitching. These are actually, um, lovely French needles that I got on the mark and I, I love them. Oh, hello, Marlena, there's your beautiful face. Hello. So I am, I am looking back and forth from you to the uh, hand stitching area. So I apologize. Um, if you have any questions at any point during this process, please do let me know. If you are in the Facebook comments, I may miss your questions, um, but I will come back to them later. So, um, and if you are in the Facebook comments, but wish to be in the Zoom, just pop right into the So Askew group, or the Zoom information is right there. All right. Um, there can be a directionality with hand stitching, I often forget what direction that is until I start the sewing, to be honest, because I've been hand sewing longer than any other part of uh, my stitching adventures. And some of it um, is so second nature to me. I'm like, oh, right, no, I'm right-handed and I move to the left as I write. Or no, with this stitch, I actually have to move from the, the left to the right instead of the right to the left. It varies by stitch. It also varies by how I need to hold the project. So my recommendation is, first of all, find a hand position that is comfortable for you and is not putting any strain on your hands. You do not want to tie your hands out more than absolutely necessary with hand stitching. Um, because it is a lot of repetitive motion and Oops. you're using very fine dexterity. So if you are using a really clumsy hold, you will get a cramp in your hands. It makes the hand stitching much less fun. So I will be using a somewhat awkward position having said that to get everything under fill so you can see what i'm doing hello sylvester yes he's being wiggly so i went down so you can all see him because he's going to jump down in a second yes you are aren't you baby <laughs> you are um, so high. Good looking. So I about a yard of threads usually rough <laughs> rough estimates and i'm going to double it so when i'm done it's about 18 to 20 inches of thread if you want to measure. You don't want to do too long a piece because it will tangle more easily. It is better to have a shorter piece and tangle less uh, than have to fight with a long piece that you need to untangle all the time. 
So let me just adjust fill here. I need to show you how I run this through my thread heaven. The thread magic has little grooves on the side of the container to help you um, sort of run it through. I don't feel like they're necessary, but can be sort of nice. Let's see if I can do it without, oh my goodness, I got it in without the needle threader. I'll be honest, even though I'm nearsighted these days, um, I find it increasingly hard to thread my needles. So I just do a loop around my pointer finger and then I tuck the little tail through that loop and that's how I make my knot. And I usually double knot, which is a habit of childhood. Um, Temperance, who we have not seen in months and months, can simply sort of pinch her fingers together and rub the thread until it makes a knot. She tells me it's very easy. I do believe she's made a crossroads deal. Um, I have no idea how she does it because I've tried many I, times. I can do it. I don't know how. You just kind of, there. like someone was like that and I was just like, oh, like th this? And it's like, oh. I did, can't tell you how. Can't tell no. you how. I may have made a crossroads deal in my sleep. I don't know. <laughs> I Clearly, that's what you did. Around my finger a couple of times and then roll it off. <laughs> yeah. Sense. Oh, that works. All right. Yeah, so, that, I must have learned that in, in school because I'm sure my mother didn't teach me anything. So I, this I, I there are different ways to knot. And um, if you can work out the magic ways, like Temperance and Robin, Good. If you can master June's way, that's a very secure, good knot. Um, or you can do my more sort of, you know, childish knot, but it's still very, it's perfectly reasonable. So find the knot that works for you, but do <laughs> not the end of your thread. It doesn't matter how long your tail is. Um, I do tend to try and make a short tail with my knots. Let's see, I don't think you can see that there. Um, but that's just because I don't want to waste thread. There's, there's nothing moral about a long tail or a short tail. You can snip that thread later, all right? So don't, don't feel judged for the length of your thread. Or the quality of your knot, as long as it stays. All right, I have to adjust my position here. Gives you a look at this dress. <clears throat> oh, it's so cute. Are they foxes? They are foxes. They're, they're absurd. I did not make it, but I love it. And um, it's very comfortable. So, all right, let's see here. Phil, I need you to actually do the thing and cooperate. Can you? Can you do the thing and cooperate? <gasps> ah, there we are. All right. Phil and I had some very strong words earlier, and uh, part of the reason the Grand Arbiter is with us is because Phil and I were not communicating very well. <laughs> so, it's magical. We can see your hands. We can see your face. Oh, so good. Yeah. Now I really want you to be able to to see what I'm stitching. The the real trick of showing hand sewing is that I cannot show it to you up here. Oh. If I'm sewing here and talking through what is going on, you'll never see my stitches. So you oh, need to be that? able to see a nice close view. Hello, Selena. Hello. Hello, Andy. Hello. 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 Oh, <laughs> so the other thing I do, oh, my little, it is cats and crafts, of course. This with is us. my big baby Pippin. He thinks Hello. he's a baby. Oh, look at that face. Look at that oh. sweet cat. Handsome cat. My Zelda thinks kid? she's a kitten and she's at least 11. So <laughs> he, he is one. He is a Wait, one in a couple of months. Yeah. You're Russian blue. Uh, are, are all the kittens gone, Marlena? Have they all gone to forever homes? 
We still have one. She is formally adopted, but she hasn't gotten picked up yet. Oh, so boy. I'm under super quarantine right now because there was an outbreak at work. Um, so I can't get rid of the baby until my test results come back. So I still have a kitten. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, so I have also, you might have seen, I dipped my needle tip into my thread having. You can, you can coat your needle a bit too. Yeah, yeah. Coat your needle. Coat the needle. Coat. Why has nobody ever said this to me? This is why you're here. So I'm going to be silly, but <laughs> oh my so God. It does help your needle go through the fabric a little smoother. Now these are really, my needle is really sharp. It's really fresh. I mean, it doesn't have any burrs or anything. But if you have a needle that has any burrs, that's really going to help. So I'm just going to actually pick up. Thank you. I'm going to come through this fold of the fabric. Andy's down there too. Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. And I'm going to just take a tiny stitch there that's just my little stitch to anchor things i'm burying my knots on the inside of the folds it's an aesthetic thing there's i just want that buried a little bit because it when the garment is inside out you won't see the knot that way it's not a um, it's not a sort of structural choice that's about aesthetics. So then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick up very close to my folds. I'm going to pick up just two or three threads of the fabric. So few. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get right in here. Just like even even just one thread. You just want to get the tiniest number of threads. It's a, just what's called a prick stitch. And you're just picking yeah. up a couple of threads. And part of that is on the other side, on the right side, you can barely see where I picked up those threads. It's almost invisible. And um, where the fabric is black, you will not see it at all. So that's the first part of the stitch. So what are you stitching right now? So good question, Michelle. Let me, Selena, sorry. <laughs> I know you by both things. Also I have some rogue threads kicking around here. So I am stitching in the bias binding of my character. This is one way to finish that bias binding. Also do a machine finish. But I like to do a hand finish because it's invisible when I'm done, or fairly close to invisible. And I thought it'd be really fun to show you because this is a really handy finish for a lot of things. So let's say you want to put in a hem that's invisible and you want to do it by hand, you can do it this way. Let's say you want to put on some um, bias treatment on a corset edge or on a chapeau, this is a stitch you can do. You bury your stitches. They will not be, they'll be almost invisible. They're very close. The smaller and tidier your prick stitch, the more invisible the overall stitch is. So, and this is a stitch I've been doing for at least 30 years, probably 35 years. Um, and I use it so frequently. So I've got that little tiny stitch, and now I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to go in to the fold of the fabric of that bias, not at all into this part of the fabric on the front. So I'm burying the stitch through the fold of the bias, and I'm running it like a quarter of an inch, and then I push my needle back out like so. And then I repeat. I take my little tiniest, tiniest, try not to get your finger skin too. <laughs> just two threads, three threads, just a tiny number of threads. Can you see how small that is? I mean, it's practice, 
I've been doing it such a long time, but you can see I just picked up one or two threads of the fabric. You can barely see them over the needle. June has probably seen this stitch before, I'm guessing. You know, I don't do handwork, so. <laughs> I, I will show you how I do this by machine as well. But I just wanted to do the hand stitching tonight. So then I, once again, I come in to the fold of the fabric. And I'm just going to run my needle again about a quarter. It depends on how firm you need it to be, a quarter to a half inch along. If I'm hemming uh, a skirt, I, I normally do about a half inch. Um, but for something like this, I'm doing about a quarter of an inch. There we go, and I will repeat. Now, when you get really uh, confident in your movements, you can actually pick up those, that thread from the top side and then move your needle directly in to the fold of the fabric. Um, but it takes a little bit of practice. So when you're start, starting out and getting used to doing this stitch, I recommend doing every step very methodically until you're comfortable with it. Once again, into the fold of the bias, about a quarter of an inch along. And I just prick my needle right back out from that fold of the bias and I take my next stitch. So if I'm not talking and I'm watching, let's say, Pride and Prejudice or something I've watched a million times, then I can probably work this out in about an hour of hand sewing, which is slower than doing it by machine. But if I want something very quiet and relaxing, this is perfect. It's also a good practice for hat making. So when we do the hat making, which is a future project, we will do we will discuss all the ways to do it by hand and I will show all the ways to do it by hand. For those of you who have arthritis or other hand injuries, I will show you how to do as much as possible by machine as well. Um, there are some bits of hat making I've never mastered doing by machine. However, I know that you can use some fabric glues to get through some of those bits. So there are ways to work around doing it by hand so that it is more accessible. So we'll talk about those, but I, I do admittedly love to make my hats almost, I'd say they're usually somewhere around 90% by hand, so, sometimes 100% by hand. Um, and it's also my answer to all the knitters who are able to take knitting basics. I cannot take a garment with me to the waiting room of an appointment or to a, a party where everyone's sewing. So I'm just like, oh, I'll bring a hat. I'll, I'll make a hat. And then I look really like, oh, you're, you're making a scarf? Yes, well, I'm making a hat. And clearly, very uh, deranged, but so happy right now. All right. So you'll see that I have also been doing this so long that I have um, developed the rhythm and don't have to think about it very much. And that's the goal, is to get to the point where you just stitch almost by feel and you don't think about it. So I'm gonna show you the front. Can you see my stitches? No. And you can get there. You can make this very invisible if you want to. Um, it does take a little practice. Your first time, you might 
have tiny little pricks of stitches visible that's all right um if my purple uh if my purple kaftan were not in the wash i would pull it out and show you that finished version because there are a few places where i grabbed like three or four stitches and the the little prick stitch is a bit more obvious but the thread really matches the fabric so it's fine it, it's not a big deal at all this thread i'm using a black thread which will show up against the light bits so i'm trying to be a bit more careful now if i bring this to maybe no it's just it's very barely visible you can kind of see a tiny bit of texture change there so that's my stitch there it is. Look at that. It's so tiny. Not bragging, just uh, showing you what it should look like. Although I'm very happy with the size of the stitch, certainly. Hello, Charity. We're using Phil, the hey, Charity. new fashion. Hello, hello. So, doing some hand stitching here. Uh, Again, just about a quarter of an inch long. So things to keep in mind when you're hand sewing, the needle is your friends. And the needle is a very important tool in that it will run a straight line. So you want to let the needle do a lot of the work for you. Um, so when I come here into the fold of the bias, I could, I could, you know, move that needle all sorts of directions, but as long as I let it go perpendicular or rather parallel to the fold of the fabric, <gasps> I, oh my gosh, there's a kitten here. Oh, we all want to see the baby kitty. Time to pause. What a sweet kitty. Kitten. Oh my. What a love. We have to pause and look at the kitty. Kitten pause. I, I, I apologize for uh, my outburst of laughing a bit a second ago, um, but she uh, burrowed so hard under the covers she ran off of the bed. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's uh, multi talented like that. Oh, baby. <laughs> she's so full of joy and boom and vinegar. Oh my gosh, she, she found out how to break out of the barriers today. Oh no! Oh, Dini kitten! Well, so we're moving and we're packing, so I have her like walled off because kittens yes. underfoot, not fun. Um, yeah, oh, so she uh, managed to surpass my uh, containment vessels. It's been fun. It's not it's been a long day. It's not yeah, we had one like that. We called him Noodles. <laughs> Noodles. Yeah, we mistook stupidity for we took mistook bravery for stupidity. Yeah, she's clever. She's just doesn't feel like she's ever. She thinks she can fly. She goes flying squirrel repeatedly all the time, and I'm like, mm, actually, that's not how that works. Not good. Not good. Not oh, but our bed is like four feet off the ground either. So. <laughs> Yeah, super kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so right, so stitching. Although we are yeah. all here, stitching. Um, <laughs> where was I? So I've uh, I've pushed my needle into the fold of this bias again, and I run it along. And when I want the point of the needle to peek through, I just sort of actually give a a bend to the fabric. And then the needle magically pushes through. At this point, it, I do that little bend so habitually that I'm just used to making the little bend. And I have my, you know, my off hand is here holding the fabric. And so when I need to bend, I actually use my off hand to do that. So it's, it's second nature at this point, but some of this is really just the, practice of doing this a few dozen times by the time you get done with putting in something like a bias binding like this you will be so smooth at this sort of stitch because 
you'll have done, you know, 40 inches. That's lots of practice. <laughs> right, so uh, once again, into that little fold. Sometimes you go through too far. You start to go through the fashion fabric. Try not to do that. And then I'm going to just bend a little. And I use my, my thimble to do the pushing from the other end, which saves my fingers a bit. And I pull my straight pins out as I go, so don't stab myself too much. Right, and another little prick there. That Charity's back, Ricky's here. All right, very good. Um, so at this juncture, I've shown you about 10 of these. So I want to know if you have any questions or if you need me to repeat any specific steps of this stitch. Because I can't imagine it's that exciting to watch me do the same stitch over and over again. Although if you need something to help you sleep, this is very hypnotic where I just talk and repeat the same motions over and over for the next hour. <laughs> so, a YouTuber I follow, Sean, who's Scottish and he does vlogging about travel and he has a separate channel where he'll just take, like sit by like a river or the ocean and he'll just record for like an hour and it's things to help you sleep. <laughs> I would oh, like that. I would like that very much. The ocean. I miss the ocean so bloody much. Oh, oh my goodness, June. Yes. Well, you grew up not far from the ocean, right? Right. So. And it was spent a year in Santa Cruz. That was the best. Oh, oh, and and of course, my husband uh, worked on his PhD. We lived in La Jolla with a view of the ocean from my kitchen window. I've. You know, I visited La Jolla, and I know you pointed out to me where you were at on the, the bay there. And so I was at a point where I was looking across at your old neighborhood. It's such a beautiful little area. La Jolla is um, very, you know, well, very... Yes, it, and just imagine living in La Jolla on like $300 a month, uh, which was... Yeah. It was, it, now this was a long time ago, but but still. But anyway, yeah, we lived in married student housing, and uh, and you know it was it was very nice, um, sort of. It was better better than what I grew up with. So. Well, and it's a beautiful area, which does make a big difference. Oh, no. Hello, Lou, back from Sturgis. Hello, oh, Mary Lou down there. There you are. I love those pink, that pink headset, Mary. There, she's still connecting to the audio. So sometimes the fabric doesn't want to cooperate. You just have to readjust your position until you can pick up those couple of little threads. It's just, it's so, it's such a tiny little stitch. This is why it helps to have a plain weave fabric, which is what this is. Plain weave is one thread over one thread under um, in weaving terms. It's not something you normally need to know in sewing very much, but most um, twill, you know, most sort of broadcloths and cotton quilting fabric is all a sort of plain weave. but makes it really easy to see those threads. If you're doing something like with a jacquard or a brocade, it can be a bit harder to see your threads. So you have to be move a bit more cautiously. How are you doing, Mary Lou? Doing pretty good, thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, I just got back yesterday. Are you, are you uh, recovering from your adventure? Uh-huh. I was glad to have a day off. I bet. Oh my goodness. So we are just doing this little bit of hand sewing on the bias binding of the kaftan. And um, you don't have to finish it this way, but it is how I normally finish mine. So I thought it'd be good to show how I do this stitch. 
and um, it's also <coughs> Stitch on Fire for doing uh, nicer hand finishing in corsetry and for uh, hat making. I use it a lot in hat making. There are faster hand stitches you could use. Um, they will be a little bit more visible. So this one is nice because not only is it really invisible on the right side of the fabric, right? Really don't think you can see most of those stitches. Um, even in the light colored sections of fabric. But if you look at the inside of the fabric, you can only barely see the stitches more. Most of the thread is actually buried in the bias, the fold of the bias tape. Um, and the advantage of that is your threads will not catch on anything when you're taking your garments off and on, or if you are, you know, if you snag your clothes on a door jam, which I, frankly, I do that quite often. So, <laughs> Um, burying those stitches means I'm much more unlikely to snag my thread and break it, um, which really helps in terms of preserving the garment. So typically, I'm being very good right now because we're on camera and talking and I want to be able to see you, but I have to say, normally I'd be stitching more like this really close to my garment, which is terrible for the back. It's not great posture. So you're keeping me much more honest, um, a little bit more aware with my posture. That said, when you are sitting down to do a bunch of hand sewing, it's really easy to forget your physical position and just get into the rhythm of the sewing. So it's important to Roll those shoulders back periodically so that you don't end up with a crook in your spine or a crook in your neck. It will yeah, one of, the, oh, one yes. of the advantages I have with a sewing table, it, with a drafting table, because it's 40 inches high, is I can lay it on the drafting table and lower the chair a little bit. <laughs> so I'm not nice. hunching. That is really nice. Yeah, no, this, I, I like this space that I'm in, um, which is my sort of correspondence desk. Um, I'll show you a little bit, although it's a bit hard for me to show you the whole setup. Um, oh, here we go. All right. So you can see I'm in this little corner space and I have my, you know, cheeky anti Lipton art and I have, you know, sort of a nice little setup with all oh, of that the and um so it's it's a just a nice little comfortable corner with good light so for the for the process of doing hand sewing especially having good light is critical and even with i think i have now something like a half dozen lamps in the workshop of doom i still find it much dimmer than this room and so I want the good light I want a nice solid chair and I want a very uh, clear flat work surface where I'm not fighting with a lot of other projects so I tend to come in here and um, when it's just me I turn on a little film or something that I stream and I watch while I sew and um, normally I do something like Pride and Prejudice, honestly, because I've watched it so many times that I um, don't really need to watch it. I have it memorised. Sort of a nice little background um, just to help my, help my brain feel less restless. Right. Any other questions about this hand stitch? Or I should add about any parts of the project so far. We are going to be getting into the skirts, the pockets, the sleeves next, 
the next bits will start to go very fast. You'll see the garment starting to look much more like a garment once the bodice is sort of together and finished. So the bodice is gathered, correct, on both sides of that overlap? Yes, the bodice is gathered. And um, you can see it a little bit, maybe. I, I have my gathering stitches here. Putting your gathering stitches, yeah? Yeah, yeah. so I've got uh, two rows of gathering oh, yeah. okay. stitches mm -hmm. down here at the bottom on both sides. It's also gathered along the back bottom edge of the bodice. So it gathers into the waist and then you gather the skirt to the bottom edge of the waist. She has a way she likes to put the waist in um, that we'll talk about. I'm going to experiment with putting the waist in slightly different. We'll see. It could You're be a terrible about that, uh, uh, that contrasting strip. And when you say the waist. Yes, yes that's, that's what I'm talking about. This sort of faux belt contrast strip yeah. um, that is actually not, it does not restrict the garment, but it gives it a visual sense of shape which I find really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's add charity. Oh, bye-bye, Christina, you're gone. <laughs> She's bye -bye, gone. Christina. Oh yeah, she has to go and- uh, Hello, Charity. Charity leaving I'm too, sorry. bye, Charity. I'm trying to mute it. I can leave it there, Charity. There you go. So, Charity, I think you've had a little technical difficulty getting into the channel, so I'm happy to have you back. All right. We are coming up to the end of this thread, so I'll show you how I finish it off. I really have some rogue threads from the... Um, fabric where it's frayed a little bit that I need to snip. I always end up with knots and things, but I guess your your beeswax stuff would help with that. Hello. Yeah, the thread really helps. Do you have a kitty to sack that bear? Um, the thread having really helps. The other thing that really helps okay. is yeah. Yeah. keeping the thread a little bit shorter. Or I can't get you in the pictures, Aggie. Oh, suck nuts. He doesn't want to be in the picture, probably. <laughs> He's rolling around. It's really cute. But I'm afraid. That, oh, well. Sorry, Zaggy. You can't be on camera. We need to set you up with a suck nut camera. Yeah, you're right. So. I need as I could do that with probably. I can't see what I'm seeing, you know. Oh, I saw just his little tail and his legs running off. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> All right, so here's a, a bit of hard worn, hard one wisdom. Yes. Do, do not, do not convince yourself that this time you only need half an inch to make a knot. This time you can get by with so little thread that you should just keep pushing your stitches yes you have three inches left to thread surely oh there's zagna again hello zaggy <laughs> april boy so i have done that i've done that thing and i saw several of you laugh so i know you've done it too where you you push you try and eke out every centimeter of thread you will make yourself so miserable trying to knot that off. And then you'll have to do like a really janky hand knot instead. So I stop about here. This is about, I guess that's about three inches. Let's see. <gasps> On the money, three inches exactly. You know you've been sewing for a while. So let's, let's talk about a little knot you can do here. There are all sorts of knots. I really love French knots as a way to finish things. That's not always the right option. Um, here, I'm just going to pick up 
my little prick stitch once again. And I'm going to leave a little loop. Can you see that loop? There we go. And I'm going to go in through the opposite direction of that loop with my needle and I pull it closed, tight. I'm going to go just through the edge of the bias and not my outer fashion fabric and make a loop again and repeat. So I like to do it twice. There we go. And I just pull it fairly snug. I had a bit of a snarl that, there at the end, which is a sign. It's a sign when it starts snarling towards the end that it's time to finish off. And then I run my needle back into the bias again. Then I'm going to bury the tail of my thread. So as I've got it here, this is fun. Then I snip, snip right by the fabric. And when I fold it out, I give it a little tiny pull and that tail is hidden in the fold. You see no tail. You just see that kind of little knot there. And from the front, you see nothing again keeping up with that invisible experience. All right, thank goodness for recording and video because I don't know if I could do it so beautifully again. So, that one went so smoothly. All right, um, so I'm going to pause for a moment. Yay, cat people, June says, yes, yes we are. Yes, you, <laughs> you missed, I briefly had Princess Zelda in my lap and then she went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> She's currently well, hiding under the table and going, how dare, how dare you put your hands upon my royal personage? How dare you, human? How dare poor you? Zelda, poor thing. Now, when I see that um, Alicia is saying that this is how she hems most of her skirts, it is a really great hem stitch. I really love this, especially for finer fabrics, for silks, for things that are very fancy where I want to do a really posh hem on them and again it's great for a hem because you don't have any threads that you're going to catch on let's say your high heel or the buckles on your shoes or uh, a million things that I've caught my hem stitches on over the years so <laughs> um, any other questions or cats or cats I mean, Princess Zelda said, no, she's done. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm trying to see if I can get her to come back, but she's going, mm, you're, you're in my way. I don't trust you right now. No. Well, and Duchess Fiona is napping um, in the other room. She's exhausted by life. Also, I, I cleaned the, the, you know, kitchen area um earlier today and that was very exhausting for her watching me labor is always tiring for her <laughs> so right let's see there there he goes it's pretty nice i did i did about you know 10 inches in the time we've been on the camera together which is slow but I've been talking and looking up and going very methodically so it won't necessarily take you so long to stitch that amount but it is slower to hand stitch that's why we like sewing machines they are faster they are convenience tools um I am not one of those uh sewers even though I love to do hand sewing I don't feel like there's something wrong with machine stitching. If you can do everything you want to buy a machine and it looks nice and you're happy with it, do it. So, for instance, I have some lovely, lovely friends whom I admire deeply who love to do 18th century sewing. So lots of, you know, you know, sack back gowns and French gowns for going to... Um, 
you know, go to Versailles and swan about in the Hall of Mirrors, uh, they will sew those entire dresses by hand. And they do a million different stitches. It's, yeah, no, Michelle, uh, uh, Marlena, yep, yeah, no, I see some, no, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I might do a bit of the finishing by hand, but they sew the entire gown, all of those pleats, all of the hems, all of the, you know, structural seams, all of the linings, every bit of it by hand. I love to watch it come together. It's really delightful. At the same time, I think, well, but in the course of a week or two, I could just stitch it up on a machine, be very strong. I'd be so happy. <laughs> so I really am a machine sewist for the most part. If I do it, do if I'm making something by hand or I'm stitching something by hand, I do have um, a method to my madness. So um, we'll talk about it more with hat making, which I said, uh, I am a bit mad when it comes to hat making. I do like to make them largely by hand. And it has a lot to do with the amount of control I have over these really weird shapes that you're dealing with in hats. Um, but if you have uh, the right sort of sewing machines, usually vintage, you could do everything on the hat by machine. But you need a vintage hat sewing machine, so. For the rest of us, we have to make do. All right, any questions, my darlings? You can throw them into the chat. You can unmute yourselves. We could just stare at each other longingly and with love and how much we can see each other. Um, <laughs> how are you coming on your caftans, by the by? Behind, I haven't done much of anything. Um, what part of the bias, what part of the the top was that bias on the bottom around the neckline. Where was it? It's on the front neckline. Okay. Edge. So I think you can see a bit there. It's on this part. Uh -huh. And so, and by the by, there's no behind here. We we're, we're going at a very leisurely pace, so you will be able to easily catch up with us. But um, this is the part that gets the bias. Hello, you. <laughs> So it is the front opening edge that just sort of okay. flops over like this when everything's all together. Okay, cool. Although Thank it's you. actually it's a bit more like this, to be honest. Not super scandalous, but like minimal scandal. So right, and uh, you can see how that looks before it's stitched mm -hmm. in. It's just all pressed. I do have a whole session on how to press okay. and press the bias. So um, that is, that is, yeah, I did record it live on Facebook. So it is archived. Yeah, Mary Lou, don't worry. I haven't been able to start either because I'm waiting for my sewing machine to get repaired. So oh, you're, no, you're, you're so not sorry. the only one. <laughs> so did you, because we, Robin and I talked about her sewing machine and it was doing something very odd. Did you, you had to take it back and do they have an idea what's going on with it? Uh, I don't know because I haven't been able to do the exchange yet because they were closed for a little while. My mom says that the place she got it's reopened. So the next time I see her, which All right, hopefully good. will be sometime in the next week, I can bring her the sewing machine. She can drop it off and thankfully they can try to figure out what is wrong with it. Oh, it's so odd. It's really beyond um, anything. What's it doing that's so strange? Uh, um, needle not connecting to the bobbin. Essentially, like the worst figure is maybe a hook timing issue, but like it, the needle got stuck and then trying to unstuck it, the bobbin completely yeah, yeah. jumped outward. And then I was able to fit it back in but then the needle just wasn't coming in. Yeah, it's not. It, so it's not picking up the bobbin threads and the bo whole bobbin housing came out of the machine when we were trying to unsnarl the thread snarl. And so it might be just that it's not quite it's back in the right place. And, and, uh, and maybe things have shifted over a little bit. But they yeah, it's a tiny shift. 
but it's so hard because if I were with Robin in person, I might be able to visually do the adjustment, but by camera, it's really hard to tell something that minuscule. Um, and it was it was not any of the obvious things. So yeah, well, we spent like an hour going down and trying to figure out what is going on. With the machine. Right. My poor so, little Hello Kitty sewing machine. It, it's sitting forlorn. It's such Unused. a lovely thing too. Um, I think you will get it sorted, but um, it's good that the shop is going to take care of it. Yeah, that's my that's my little Hello Kitty machine. It's just sitting, fun. waiting to be repaired. Oh, it's so good. I love that machine. The, the wonderful thing about the kaftan, really, truly, from this, we are taking our time. We are going very methodically, step by step. You can put it together in a few days' time very easily. It's just that we are breaking it down into all of these steps so that you can see all of the techniques. The, you know, you can always just put me on fast forward and play me really fast in the background and, and stitch along with you. Oh, there she goes, she's rambling about cats again. Okay, good. Um, so. And Mary Lou, who's in the background with you? I see somebody curled up. I have a dog. Ah, look at her. He's lying over there. Oh, sweet puppy. So bitch. Such a good baby. And I know that Andy also has some puppies as well. So I have a question about, so I did the full bust adjustment. Good. The pattern now on the side seam, instead of being straight, <laughs> then it's kind of joggedy a little bit. It so, does that for you too. Okay, so that's correct then. That's correct. Now you're going to be putting in a little dart there on the side seam, which will bring in that dog leg a little bit, but you are going to have, instead of a nice straight line, you will, let me see here. You can see it a bit on mine, maybe. Let's see, you can see there's a little bit of a jog. I hope you can see that. Yeah. Um, I just, just treat it as though it was straight. Okay. Once you put your sleeve in and everything else, because of the curves of your body and the way that's going to curve around your bust, no one will ever realize it's not a straight line. It's just like pillars um, and the columns in Grecian um, antiquity sites. The columns look visually like they're straight up and down and they're the same width at the top, the middle and the bottom, but they're actually slightly thicker in the middle. Yeah, it's perspective. It, yes, so it's the same thing here. Well, I mean, it's not quite the same thing. We're not Greek. We <laughs> are expecting these garments to last for a thousand years, but visually it will appear even and that's, that's all you're looking for. I don't even notice it at all. And I know it's there. I never see it in my purple one or of any, any of the others I've made. It just sort of disappears into that scene. So, yeah, good. But a very important question, Michelle, because, because you do end up with this, this uh, drafted scene that's very straight. And then suddenly it's like, oh no, I'm I'm a wide river. I've lots of bosom. And I've not done it before. So I was like, oh, did I do this right? You did. You did. Now, in some things, let's say you're dealing with a, a really fitted uh, Victorian bodice, and you need to do a full bust adjustment there to, um, to make that fit a bit better you might need to do another mock-up to see if that curvature on the side is going to work out. But something I've learned as I've done more sewing with bodices and really tailored things is there are many fewer straight seams in a really well-fitted bodice, tailored bodice, than you think. Um, you can even make that front center seam 
bit is so straight up and down, you can curve that a little bit. As long as you curve everything the right way, it looks visually straight. You get a much better fit over this big curve. Or, you know, it's really big curve on me. But this curve on, on your bodice, it is a noticeable curve on pretty much everyone, right? Whether you're an A cup or, or no cup. Now, if a gentleman wanted to wear uh, a fitted bodice, he too has pectorals and he has a different shape across the chest. It's not necessarily perfectly straight then. So, oh, and let's see what Alicia says. Um, she did finish her version of the kaftan, excellent. Um, she didn't use the pattern we are using to be due to cost, and she doesn't really like the butterfly sleeves. Totally legit. Um, and she pulled from her stash to make her version of fine, it's hot, I'm dressed, it's better be good. Yes. <laughs> My caftan is fine, it's hot, I'm dressed, all right. Um, especially many of us are working from home and we're just on uh, the Zoom chats or the video chats, you can only be seen from the waist up. <laughs> then, honestly, you know, it's extremely normal. And the caftan is like cheating in clothes, so it's great. Uh, any other questions or comments before we wrap up? This went very fast. So, uh, or fast, actually. And I'm so happy that we got through it. I hope that was helpful for the hand stitching. It's something I haven't felt I have been able to demonstrate well in the past. So, um, I'm optimistic. Right. But you should tell me. If I'm deluding myself, and it's actually it was terrible, and you never want me to do that again. It's also a fine answer. <laughs> that was good. It, um, I use something similar when I am binding, when I'm doing hand binding on quilts, like I'll machine bind one side and then I'll flip it over and hand bind. Very rarely will I do this. I have to like you a lot um, to do that or I'll just, or if it's a baby quilt, I'm not even going to bother. I'm machine stitching both sides of that. They're going to use it. Like, that's what it's for. But a few people have gotten hand binding and it's very similar, um, more, it's a little closer to a ladder stitch, but I like the smaller uptakes and stuff. So I'm going to try it well, yeah. <laughs> next good. time I have to do it. <laughs> you. Um, I like that for doing uh, really nice corsets. Um, it's not the way I do most of my corsets these days, but if I make one all out of silk or I finish it in silk or, or it's, uh, you know, somebody's bridal corset or something like that, then I'll take the extra step and I'll do the hand finish. I don't do quilts, so kudos to you. <laughs> right. Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, then I release you into the wild. But I'm so happy that we could do this tonight. Um, I really wanted to demo doing the hand stitches. I'm going to have to make up a sample to show you how I would do this by machine, in part because I don't want to finish my own by machine. But I think it's important to show you how to do that. It's fairly easy you're going to be doing some top stitching. And um, June probably has some good experience with this. And I know that Deborah often talks about this. You can get nice top stitching thread if you want to make it really posh. But it's not necessary to use top stitching thread. I absolutely do my top stitching with my regular Gutemann all the time, and it's fine. Um, I also don't tend to use a special top stitching needle, although all of these things exist. It sort of depends on how visible you want your top stitching to be, how concerned you are about the thread and the fabric and how they marry. But mostly you can use an all-purpose needle, your all-purpose thread, and get a good top stitch. The big thing is to know your measurements. Well, if you're not trying to have the top stitch be a be a feature, and you're just trying to kind of hide hide it, then you don't need to have a 
top stitch needle. A top stitch needle has a bigger hole so that you can put heavier thread through it. Right, and it will make it more decorative. Right, yeah. and sometimes you could do it like a triple stitch or something like that to make it stand out. But uh, if you're something like this, you just you want it to blend in. So. Absolutely. So one of the things I um, suggest that you might consider if you want to do something a bit fancy is you could do a double needle. Um, and you can find a double needle at your local independent machine shop. Um, or order them from our WAWAC or any other sewing supply shop. And um, that can be a really quick, fun way to do a, a decorative stitch. It will look like a zigzag on the undersides though. So we'll talk about that. I'll try and demo both the double needle and the typical thing I would do with top stitching, this bias binding in place. Um, now, I think, the last time we were together that coffee um, suggested stitching in the ditch. You can stitch in the ditch, of course. It's a I'm bad sure. way. I don't see, I don't see how, what, how you could stitch in the ditch for that. Stitching in the ditch is, is if you're trying to catch the underside. Right. Uh, so. Um, uh, I don't recommend it here. It's not going to look good. So yeah, you're right, June. You, Typically, you'd be trying to catch the underside. Since your bias binding is actually folded to the underside of your right. fabric. You're not covering the edge. You're folding it under like a, like a facing sort of. Yeah. Right. It's like a little bias facing. So if you stitch in the ditch, you'll have a very uneven stitch that will be super visible on the top. It'll look really sloppy after all of your hard work. There are times when you can finish bias and edging by stitching in the ditch. This is not a good one of those times. So, any other questions or comments? I'm, I'm looking to see if anyone's raising their hands or looking confused. No, all right, well, so, we shall meet again. I think there will be something this weekend in terms of some crafting and cats and stitching. Um, I might be able to squeeze in some sewing Thursday, but it is a very busy Thursday, so I don't want to make any promises. Um, but do watch for some information about a weekend uh, sewing session again. We'll look at more of the caftan and maybe look at some of these machine options or possibly dive further ahead. Um, in the meantime, do remember you are not behind, you are right on time for where you want to be in the project. I know at least one of you is buying a house and moving. Um, one of you just got back from a major trip all the way up to like the Yellowstone Park area and back. Um, some of you are sweltering in upstate New York or, or melting in Southern California. Some of us are wondering why we live in the mouth of hell in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. Yeah, see, I, I can't complain because it's only 84 outside of where I am. Oh, but as cool. other friends who, it's still like 100 in the valley. Oh, oh. no, no. Yeah, no. June's like only 84, <laughs> don't dare complain. We were told on the news tonight that we're not supposed to use our appliances between three and eight tonight and keep our, and raise our thermometer, our thermostats up. And I said, well, I, I won't, I won't, that. I promise. <laughs> really oh, wait, you're supposed through. to be 115 in Phoenix? And I'm like, that's not weather. No, it was only a hundred. I don't know. When I was driving over to my hairdresser today and back, my car said it was 114 here, but it, it, not wasn't officially that high, but it sure felt like. It was yeah, I think high. the official was about 109 or about 41 Celsius today. Yeah. It's just horrible. It's, it's, going on. it's going to go on and on and on and on. I mean, it wasn't bad enough. We have COVID-19 that we have all these different things going on. And we're in the, as you say, in the mouth of hell. Yes. Well, as Alicia says, that's better than the other end of hell.
<laughs> okay, up at, up at my work, it is currently 99 degrees. It was a high of 110 in the San Fernando Valley today. Oh, no. gosh. No, that's yeah. Then I oh, understand oh, that many, many of you in California do not have climate control, do not have air conditioning. Right. And so is, Berkeley has no air conditioning whatsoever, just fans. Uh, you know, and Berkeley is not supposed to get hot. She's down near the bay, too. So. My yeah. little sister's in Berkeley also, yeah. They're currently 109 here in Phoenix. Oof. Really. Uh, my mom lives down the street from me, and yesterday, no, it was the day before yesterday, I think it was, in her backyard, it was 117. Oh God! Oh God! That's horrible. That's when that's when they have to ground the planes because the uh, yeah. wheels melt to the tarmac. Uh -huh. It's just over a hundred and twenty is when they have to do that, and it's oh, down here. It's a little lower because we don't usually get as hot as right. Um, it's got to do with the the runways aren't long enough because the air gets thinner and they don't have enough that lift. Uh huh. Planes. So mm -hmm. here it's around 120 is when they start looking at it. God, it's just horrible. Just horrible. Hey, yeah. at least I've got AC. As long as the electrical grid and my AC unit holds up, I'm good, man. <laughs> yeah, but that they're, they're talking That's about the electrical good. grid going down. So you know. Yeah, they're talking about rolling rolling blackouts for us in California. I'm like, no, don't do it. <sighs> uh, no, no. I um I feel for you all. It's it is terrible, and I'm with June. I did not slow down my consumption this evening. In terms, of, I did not turn off the air conditioning. Oh God, no! <laughs> not yeah. Oh, yeah. Not I was in England last summer, and oh. it was weird because oh, I mean, I'm in the valley, you know, in, in Phoenix, so. You know, every place has, you know, AC and fans and stuff like that. And there were, I saw two fans, The in, and I was in England for three weeks. I saw two fans the entire time I was there. I could not believe that they just don't have them. So those guys have got to be you know, just miserable because they don't, there's no, I understood that there's no AC. I mean, they can't retrofit 100-year-old buildings for it, but they don't even have fans. No, no, uh, no. It's, it's well, we really were in England one summer with the um, 1985, I think it was, and we were down in L town in London, and it was like they were having a heat wave, and we went like to Harrods for tea, and it was it was so hot. I just couldn't I couldn't breathe, you know. I mean, because and it's also because very humid. It was just yeah. it was terrible. I, I was also in the UK last summer, but it was it was interesting because we were we were in London for a few days and it was very warm. It was in I think the eighties and the nineties, and then we flipped Inverness and it was <laughs> pouring rain and forty nine degrees. Like forty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Scotland! I'm ready for you. I I can <sighs> that. I can live with that. No. See. Yeah, we, we had com we had conversations with people about, you know, oh, you know, oh yes, it was you know a little bit warm in London, but in Los Angeles sometimes it gets to this temperature, and they we were trying to equate it to Celsius. They're like, that's not weather. That that that's not weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today wasn't too bad. It was only like eighty, but the humidity oh. is like thirty five. <laughs> oh. oh, we've been having seventy percent humidity in Los Angeles. It's been ridiculous. Oh. Yeah, uh -oh. it, after it rained, the humidity went to like 60. We have no humidity. It's still 80. At the moment. No, no. no, we have what, 10% humidity or something like that. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I, I, right now I'm at 74% humidity outside. <sighs> it's warm. So I tried, tried running my new cool. I have a cooler as well as air conditioning, and I tried running my beautiful new cooler, but it could not compete with 108 mm -hmm. not, and nine degrees. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, even the cooler couldn't handle that. So, so this is another reason to make the caftan. That's a delightful segue. Um, because it's too hot to wear real clothes for yes. almost any of them. So <laughs> you can well, really choose the caftan. 
<laughs> in my defense, I also had a fencing class right before this. So I've been jumping around like an idiot for 45 minutes beforehand. <laughs> Well, you're looking very, very exciting and good for someone who's been jumping about fencing. So, I do like the fan, though. It's very yeah. nice. It's like, ah, oh, I'm tired. I I'm did get my cat fan cut out over the weekend. Excellent. Woo! I'm done cut out. You've done the full bust adjustment, which I do think is the most intimidating part of this pattern. If you need to do that, um, no bust adjustment. I have no bust. But you know, when I make this for the grand armature, I do not need to put in the full bust adjustment. <laughs> it's to do. Um, if you did, we would need some splaining. <laughs> yes, well, that would be definitely his. You know, I'm going to the Star Trek vacation worlds, togs. So more more of the Chestel zone displays, I suppose. Very Jean-Luc Picard sort of look. Um, <laughs> but no, no, he's going to be nice and, you know, tucked, tucked away. Um, so yes, that is, I think, the most intimidating part. But again, this is a nice pattern to learn that with as um, there's not, much else you need to worry about adjusting. So we will be moving forward. Um, look for working up the sleeve facings pretty soon. There's going to be some uh, working with gathers again, which is always good. Um, we've got pockets in our future. And then I'll be honest, I do my hem on this kaftan by machine. I finish that bias facing by hand. I just do the hem by machine. So, well, who's going to look, you know, go down and look at your ankle? Well, they might see your ankles, but they would take precedence over your hem, I think. I don't know. You said you spend a lot of, that is not where people typically stare. They're usually looking at my teacups. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Um, this is a good time to be practicing and also making something very cozy, very elegant. And as Alicia pointed out, there are many, many kinds of kaftans. We've just been doing this one because I love the pattern and I love the skills you can learn from it. Um, and I like these big full sleeves. I can smuggle small children in them, you know. <laughs> Put an entire picnic in my sleeve. It's fantastic. So <laughs> as you go out there this evening and continue with your Tuesday evening, do stay cool to the best of your ability. For those of you who are not in a swamp, which is almost all of you, except for the three of us in Arizona. Um, no, four of us, five of us in Arizona. I can count. Counting is hard. And, um, you know, you could drape a wet towel over your fan and create your own swamp cooler. I do have, have a sweet little fan, that, that little Dyson fan in, in here. This room doesn't get it. This room doesn't get as much uh, of the air conditioning because this part of the house is an add-on. So uh, yeah, it's, it's like my workshop of doom. Yes, it's not yes, very it's much not as bad as that, although it's on the yeah. west side, so. Not good. No, I think I have two fans going now because you've. I, you've I probably have some them. more I could give you too. I probably have some more in the shed if you'd like some. <laughs> I'll let you know. We'll, we'll turn it into a real wind tunnel and then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so, for those of you who are sweltering in the swamp, do stay cool, drink lots of water as well as your tea. And um, you know, I'm going to send you off with the same request as I do every time we chat on video if you can stay home do if you must go out please wear a mask wash your hands take care of yourselves you are treasures Marlena please let us know how that test comes back please be well I don't I just thank you yeah. you've got kittens you've got a house You've got a lot going on. So, and I like you. Please don't get sick. Um, My hairdresser had several people today cancel because they'd been exposed.
So it's not going away, you know. No, it is not. Let's be glad they're being responsible. Yes, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. absolutely glad that, that they weren't there right before I was. And, <laughs> and I've been a whole bottle of wine responsible today. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, uh, Marlena, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be fair, my husband and I are sharing. <laughs> no, I did not share. I did not share. There, <laughs> there are times you do not need to share. I went to Whole Foods and I got a big torpedo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. My PAs. I did almost do my white wine tonight, but I, I thought tea would be good for me. Oh, you're such a, you're such a, 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 a noble madam <laughs> two more days it's in quarantine so, for two more days <laughs> two more days all right all right good so everyone do take good care you are treasures and i do worry about you so i thank you for all of the caution that you take and I thank you for going on this sewing adventure with me. You will see that it has been recorded. And so it's archived on Facebook. You will be able to review um, the hand stitching that way when you get there. But of course, you can also always ask me in the Sew Askew group or private message me. And I am always happy to answer questions that way to the best of my ability or to review them again on the live video. I'm happy to come back to things if we need them. So in the meantime, thank you for spending your Tuesday with me. I will see you later this week. We will be live Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, live Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific. And who knows what Sunday will bring? Probably a Zoom and probably sewing probably around 1.30 p.m. or 2 p.m. Pacific. I suspect, um, as they say, God willing and the crick don't rise. So uh, I'd love we'll... to see a crick at this point. <laughs> <laughs> a crick. <laughs> oh, oh don't, don't tempt bugs. I, I saw some truly gigantic cockroaches in downtown LA last night. Oh, no. Ooh, ooh, no, no. no. Like, they were like that. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh yeah, I get the big uh, desert ones every once in a while. I find them dead in the kitchen with their little legs in the air. <laughs> oh, yeah, the big, the big ones. The big ones. Oh. Dear, dear Cake and Fiona like to bring them to me occasionally. Mm. Oh, aren't they sweet? Oh, no, my battery is low on my laptop. Uh-oh. My, well, my cats occasionally will go after spiders they find in our apartment, and they will bat at them, and then they will eat them. Oh yep. no, oh no. Well, I'm going to take us off of the Facebooks and okay. see here. We, we, we need just to. I'm just going to stop the live stream. 